Hello everyone, this is Satvik and in this video I will show you, I'll be showing you how you can reverse engineer a router's firmware and try to identify any vulnerabilities which could lead to any zero days or can also help you in any pen test or you can even find some cool backdoors in it. So uh, I'll be taking this particular block medium blog post for my reference and this is a wonderful blog post and whole great goes to the writer Kavish Kagihan uh, and uh, this covers uh, how you can uh, reverse engineer a router's firmware and uh, this, these steps can also be followed on any other firmware I tried uh, reverse, reversing some other uh, hardware gadgets that I found out uh, and the steps actually work the same because uh, most of these embedded devices more or less have the same kind of uh, file systems written into their firmware so you can give it a go uh, for this uh, tutorial i'll be working over some tp-link uh, uh, router firmware uh, which is meant to be vulnerable so that's the reason it is mentioned in this particular article uh, but uh, you can actually go out on amazon.com and try to find out any routers uh, maybe like simply like routers and there are like several routers that you can come across maybe uh, you, you can start with something of a very less known brands like uh, i would generally go out on amazon and look out for some routers which cost like 20 or 30 dollars and uh, you know since uh, the reason is like since the price is already low the the investment on the development of the software or firmware could be little lower and and there is a good chance you can find vulnerabilities in them and potentially you can report them if no one else reported that it could be a zero day so that's a cool thing you can do but for this tutorial i'll be going over this so i will download this particular firmware and uh, i'll leave the links for everything in the description below so you can feel free to check them out uh, let me go to the downloads and this is the firmware that i downloaded you can try to follow the same steps on any uh, other uh, any other firmware of your choice uh, here you can see if i do an ls here uh, let me remove this uh, this is the bin file here uh, which is nothing but uh, the binary it's it's like kind of uh, how a firmware looks like it's like it's it's kind of compressed operating system uh, which allows uh, to be it, it to be run on some other uh, embedded devices like if you know any embedded devices like they might not have like some crazy hardware specifications so they might be having like very little ram and storage so uh, these firmwares are like very less like if you do an ls hyphen la it will be like few mbs that's all uh, but yeah let me try to rename this binary to some firmware dot pin because uh, the name kind of look has some spaces in it and it will mess up the commands in the future uh, let me close this chrome so now the first thing is uh, you can look some kind of what type of information it is like uh, so it says that it belongs to the tp link technologies version and things like that which is pretty cool and uh, if you want to know more about a bin file and uh, since the file type is dot bin and you can see it's a firmware we can use some tool like binwalk so binwalk is already pre-installed on the machine uh kali machine at least or else you can simply do sudo apt install binwalk and uh, run it over the firmware so if you encounter any kind of module issues like uh, previously i encountered a python module issue called as capstone so try to re uninstall it and install the version that uh, binwalk requires i'll leave the link for the binwalk's repo in the description so you can feel free to reinstall from there but if you go through this clearly uh, there are like some uh, decimal uh, there are some description for every kind of uh, header so there is a firmware header there is some lzdma compressed data there is firmware header there is squash a, a, a squash file system so this is what uh, interesting me because squash file system is a type of file system it's like a compressed version of an operating system you know like uh, it, it it enables the firmware that developers write uh, to work uh, properly on embedded devices like 
as I mentioned, embedded devices doesn't have much of uh, storage and capacities, right? So this Squash FS is a, a simple kind of file system. So uh, through the bin work, we identified that there is a particular file system uh, which is uh, located of, uh, which is starting from this particular num uh, from this number of uh, particular number of bytes, which is like one million one hundred eighty thousand byte onwards onwards. So now what we have to do is like uh, we just have to carve it. So uh, a car uh, carve is nothing but like we, we have to try to get this particular file system on our machine. So this uh, carving is a step you generally follow in forensics like whenever some whenever you get some kind of uh, heavy kind of files right uh, host based files then you carve file system wise and then you try to perform the analysis instead of simply dumping out the whole 100 gigs or 200 gigs of uh, uh, you know uh, evidence so for the carving part we, we can use something called as dd and we know the offset from where we have to do it so dd is also install uh, on your Kali so I don't remember the exact name what is DD is called but uh, it's just used for the carving part so DD and there is an option called IF and just assign it to firmware uh, that's it and uh, byte size a uh, block size should be generally one uh, this is like in general way and then we have to skip the previous uh, we just have to skip the previous 1 million bytes so because all these previous bytes are kind of uh, useless for us for the time being i mean they are headers but if you want you can try to analyze them but in general it's not required in my opinion so i just want to skip all these previous bytes uh and then output file is going to be like uh, fs dot sqfs uh, let's name it like uh, let's name it router so sqfs is like a file uh, the extension here so this might take a little bit of time but uh, since this is like few megabits or maybe like few bytes it, it would be done very quickly so you can see it's pretty much done it's like 6.8 to 7 point i think 7.1 mb i guess so that's pretty cool and you can simply run a file over this file command over this root sqfs and you can see it is a squash fs file system and it's in the little indian format uh, this little indian format is going to be helpful when you are trying to do some binary exploitation and all so i'll come over that but for now we actually have a file system which can be uh used but uh, if you can observe this this is actually a compressed file system so we just have to uncompress it so same like squash fs there is something called as unsquash uh, fs i think unsquash yeah unsquash fs is also pre-built so you just have to run it over uh, router i think you just have to do it as sudo yeah, I just had to do it as sudo and the unsquash fs is like it's like compressing and decompressing like how you compress to dot zip and uh, decompress it the things like that now if you do an ls you have a squash fs hyphen root folder so you can simply go to this and now if you are kind of familiar with linux environment so this is how a linux file system actually looks like and now you are presented with a full-blown linux machine now uh, one thing I generally like to do is like look out for any kind of hard coded passwords or things like that. Uh, sometimes you can be lucky enough and you can also look for uh, etc password. I think it should be there. Uh, it's not there. Cool. Uh, if you go to cd etc and look out for any kind of uh, things here, there is a shadow file. Let's do shadow. Uh, sorry, my bad. I shouldn't be doing CD, CD here. I should be doing cat. Uh, so that's the reason I failed. Now we have some hashes here, uh, which I think I don't know if you could decrypt this or not. I mean, uh, try to get it or not, but root and admin has a similar things. And same like this, uh, you can simply grab uh, into this for like password and things like that sometimes you might find some hard-coded passwords which happens like most of the times 
uh, this is uh, the password here you're seeing here might be for uh, the admin interface of a router so which is nothing but some kind of uh, a website right so you can see it here and there are some alerts going on some password and things like that apart from that you will also find several binaries uh, which perform some certain application like service kind of thing like maybe some there might be some service running out on your uh, router which is going to perform dhcp and things like that so then you what you can do is uh, you can try to do some ba basic binary exploitation tricks so i have covered like uh, several videos on my channel which goes through all the binary exploitation techniques uh, mo uh, at least most of them and you can try out of them uh, you can try out them and try to get any kind of uh, vulnerabilities and things like that too and apart from that uh, uh, you have like several files uh, you know you can also run linpeace on this uh, but uh, you know uh, but you'll be dumped with like a lot of details uh, because linpeace runs on your kali machine for example and uh, that covers this file system too but it also covers your kali file system so you'll be getting up like a lot of uh, uh, details there but uh, if there is any tool that you can specifically perform uh, linux plus escalation kind of things on uh, a certain file uh, directory or things like that then it would be really cool but yeah uh that being said uh this is how like in general people identify zero days within routers uh to the help of this uh you know sometimes you can find firmware sometimes you might not find firmware which could be hard coded or which could be proprietary in my opinion uh like for example netgear i think some companies does not allow users to download firmware because uh, it's how like uh, closed source eco uh, ecosystem works like how windows work like windows open so uh, os is kind of closed source but same here uh, some router companies or some companies allow users to download firmware in which you can actually download them some companies do not uh, for that there are some other tools which i will be exploring and try to cover it in future parts of this video but uh, in this video series my bad but yeah, but for most of the companies, uh, uh, most of the router companies, actually like 80% of them just, uh, you can find the firmware out there on internet. So using the following steps, you know, the first thing is like, you just have to carve the squash file system, unsquash it, and you'll be presented with all these files, uh, which you can perform, which you can go through each file and each directory and try to find any cool, interesting things and things like that. So that is it for this video. I hope I've covered some cool and interesting things and uh, do let me know if you have any uh, suggestions for the future videos or uh, anything like that and thank you so much for watching this video till the end